Now, something I've been thinking to myself is, is this game tomorrow versus Man City coming a bit too soon? Now, currently, we're in a little bit of a downward slump. We saw a shambolic team performance against Arsenal. It was one of the lows currently of the season, but this is a low that we don't have to be defined by. And the only way to not be defined by a performance like that is to take advantage of the next game, use that as an opportunity to play to the real level all these guys know they can play to. Now for me, I felt like this was a collective failure throughout the entirety of the team. I'm looking at Graham Potter that didn't give the right tactical framework and setup to allow the players to play past a very organized, well-drilled Arsenal team that have been working under Arteta now for over a thousand days, playing in set positions, understanding their roles, understanding when and where to be off the ball. And for me, especially in that second half, that's why we look absolutely lost. We have to keep things real. That Arsenal performance was no real reflection whatsoever of the level we know these players can aspire to and play towards. Like, let's deep it, like, realistically, will we ever create as little as we did against Arsenal? Absolutely not. Do we not think that the players will be angry with themselves, angry with that performance, angry by all the doubts, the criticism and the anger that performance generated from the fan base? Absolutely not. The team will be raring to go. I feel like Graham Potter will be raring to go as well too. And tomorrow provides an amazing opportunity to right those wrongs now and put in a performance that players on the field can feel proud of. That's what I think we have to see now because we're up against a Man City team that have been years down the development path. A Man City team where realistically we're going to see a B team played by Man City. But that B team is of such a level and standards that realistically you still expect them to win most games in this league. Now, looking at Man City's past performances, you would say that compared to the start of the season where they were an absolute goal machine, the goals were firing left, right and centre. You know, the goals have come to a more steady, realistic spot now. I mean, since that 4-0 win against Southampton, like back in October, um, a lot of teams now have been coping maybe a bit better against Man City. That's involved them playing deeper, more defensive, you know, closing the gaps between their defence and their midfield, closing the lines, being more compact and hitting Man City on the counter-attack. This has resulted in Man City not having as many clear-cut chances on target, as well as being a little bit exposed, of course, in the counter-attack too. A few times, I think, since that game, players have picked up red cards now and that tells you that if you can isolate them, if you can play as a team, play as a unit and take advantage of those moments that you will get against Man City, anything potentially could happen, especially considering that this is a cup game. This is knockout round football. This is not a league game. Both teams will be playing to win this game. In the cups, especially in the Champions League, they picked up Neil Neil draws versus Copenhagen as well as Dortmund too. And I guess to get something versus Man City, you have to accept that you're going to have to suffer. You're going to have to play as a team and as a unit. And for me, that's probably all I'm asking for right now. To play that style of football is going to take us a bit of time now, yeah? So as long as we can show the other intangible parts of football, you know, teamwork, desire, sacrifice, suffering, as Antonio Conte once famously said, then for me, that will show me that this team, of course, is still fighting for each other and still ready on achieving targets and goals set for the season. It's going to be an interesting game. We're going to see rotation from both Man City as well as us. You know, we've already seen the reports. We know that Hutchinson, Lewis Hall and Humphreys were admitted from the PL2 game last night against Spurs in which we beat them 3-0. And i got to say real quickly, I thought Kasaide, wow, this guy was looking hella impressive in midfield against Spurs. So this will be an opportunity, of course, to rotate the team, but still, Everything I said at the start of this video still applies and still matters. You have to play and show the application on the field. You guys, in the preview today, I'm going to break down the press conference going through the important bits. I'm going to discuss my predicted lineup for the game tomorrow. I'm going to give my realistic prediction as well too. So I hope you guys enjoy. Get involved in the comments and stay tuned for later tonight because I'm dropping my video on Graham Potter. Before we get into anything, one quick plug, currently there is a new episode of the Last Fan Standing series on Betfix's YouTube channel. I'm going to play you guys a brief clip now. Chelsea were pathetic. Chelsea were awful yesterday. Arsenal, all they had to do was turn up and do basic football and things correctly, which they did. And it didn't even take a moment of class, which is what we have become 
used to in recent weeks with Arsenal, there have been moments where the football is blistering, moments where there is like remin remnants of that old Arsenal team that would... I mean, listen, I get it. You know, Mr. George Benson ain't a very happy guy. I don't think any of us were after that performance, but a lot of us understand that there is a long-term plan in place at this point in time. Still though, you have to address what you see in front of you. And I'm hoping that Porter learned a lot from that game. Me personally, I felt like, especially in that second half, when he shifted to like a pivot midfield, that completely left us open. The gaps, the distances between our attack, midfield, defense were way too open. And us were cutting through us at will at times. So, so I'm hoping that Porter has kind of learned his lesson and never makes us as open again in any game versus top quality opposition. We can't afford to do that tomorrow. So you guys, there is going to be a full episode link in the card above the description below. Get involved and check it out for yourselves. Cool. So right now, let's discuss the press conference. I'm going to go through the important bits. And I think, you know, I want to start off by talking about nurturing Graham Potter. Because there were a few interesting questions asked by journalists in this press conference. Uh, most notably in regards to Raheem Sterling. Uh, you know, with Raheem Sterling, you know, admitting that he hasn't played to the level he know he can. And he's been maybe a little bit deflated. Uh, you know, Porter, of course, responded by saying that, you know, he holds himself to accountability. Of course, that's what top players do. Let's keep things real. But I liked his response because Porter also provided some context. I mean, realistically, in the past six weeks, Porter's right. We played eight away games when you're constantly traveling, when it's hard for you to find that stability back at yards, to find the time to fully recuperate and rest as well too. Things will be difficult. And on top of that, with injuries, on top of that, when you're still trying to build that structure and identity, I guess the prevailing thing Port was trying to stress was that he doesn't want individuals beating themselves up too much because this is a team failure. These are collective team issues. He said he's been here before with Brighton. Things weren't smooth sailing whatsoever. This is nothing new to him and he has the experience to get us through this. Obviously, let's discuss some of the injury news. Uh, of course, we know there's long-term injuries to so many players, and it feels like, I don't know when these guys are gonna recover in time. You're looking at James, you're looking at Fofana. It seems like it's gonna take him a bit longer to get back to full fitness. Um, we know that Kovacic is maybe not 100% right now, and Jorginho has like a slight foot injury at this point in time. And considering we got this game versus Newcastle this weekend, it's only natural that we have to rotate for the game tomorrow, but it has to be like the right rotation. And I'm sure we will see some interesting selections in that game. So we end things and let's discuss one of the uh, big prevailing things on the press conference. And that's the fact that Graham Potter did confirm that both Amari Hutchinson, Lewis Hall are part of the squad and they will be involved in the game tomorrow. Now I find this interesting. Uh, make sure you check out my predicted lineup on this one. Lewis Hall is a very interesting player. He is really more of a number eight, but we've seen him play as a left back, as a left wing back and all across the midfield too. But his best position is as an eight. So are we going to potentially see maybe Potter using like a 3-4-3 three, three with Hall playing as a wing back to give Kukurea a little bit of rest? Could we see Hall even coming off the bench to play in midfield? I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. I'm going to learn a lot about what Potter does with the lineup. But I guess, you know, they were the most important parts in the press conference. Let's now discuss the predicted lineup for the game tomorrow. And as you guys can see beside me, I've gone for more of a full 3-3 formation. Up front, Breuer. Alongside him in the wings, Pulisic and Amari Hutchinson on the right. Midfield, I've gone for Gallagher, Ruben and Zakaria. Defence, Kukurea, Kulabali, Jeva Jalaba, Aspilicueta and Mendy in goal. Now, before any of you guys get a little bit offended by the lineup we've seen, let me explain my reason behind why. Of course, we know we've got Newcastle coming up. That's an important game. Uh, for sure, I feel like players have to be monitored. We have to make sure that we're not going to overextend players. We don't want to be in any situations now where more players get burnt out and pick up unnecessary injuries. So that's the reason for why I've selected this midfield. I think Gallagher has always had very good games versus Man City, especially last season on loan at Crystal Palace. He'll be raring to go. If he has a good performance, he can probably put himself in contention, possibly for the game versus Newcastle. I've gone for Ruben just to start the game. Um, to be honest, you can insert any midfield player you want. He's our fittest midfield player currently. I'm not expecting him to play the full game. He should be rested in time for Newcastle. And I'd imagine maybe Mount or Koffer might come on in the latter stages, of course, to just rotate those minutes. But uh, for me, I'm hoping that I get to see the carrier play again. Uh, for me, he's more of a holding mid player, but he has that uh, skill set where he can 
advance the ball forwards. You know, he can play in a 3-2. And we saw his ball-winning credentials in that game with Zagreb where not only did he get a goal in his debut, but I thought he gave a very good account of himself in terms of how he was carrying himself in that field. So he definitely has to get minutes tomorrow. We have to turn to the midfield players now. And if he can have a good game, he could potentially put himself in the running for a Sport versus Newcastle as well too. So I definitely got eyes out for that midfield. So now I'm going to explain my front three. Breuer, I'm sure we all kind of collectively agree, he has to play tomorrow without a doubt. Let's, let's keep things real. And for me, maybe it might be a little bit deeper now because I'm looking at Aubameyang. Oba does have those short-term qualities that we can rely upon now, but at the same time, he's not someone that's getting better. And I don't think he's quite as good as he used to be. And for me, you know, Breuer is young. He could probably benefit by getting a consistent small running. You know, when you're young, you need to build your match experience. You know, this is how you learn about how you uh, compete against opposition defenders, how you build that match experience. Whilst at the same time, we could use this as an opportunity to coach a guy a bit more. I mean, currently, he's more one of those forwards that likes to make runs in the channels, left and right. But looking at his skills that we can take on his man, that counter-attacking presence he could give us versus Man City 2, I feel like he could become even better. We should develop him to be able to like drop deeper to bring the midfield into the game, to bring his teammates into the game, to take pressure away from them too. I feel like I could see the full potential of what Breuer could become. Like imagine a Diego Costa that was more skillful on the ball and more direct. I think he could be a very interesting player, but realistically, if you're going to get like a few odd uh, substitute minutes per game, that's not enough time to build anything substantially, to be honest with you. And considering that Aubameyang to me kind of feels like uh, he creates a lot of issues tactically in the sense that he's not going to press. He won't press from the front whatsoever. Against Arsenal in that second half when you've got Sterling and Oba not pressing from the front, I mean, they were cutting through us, left, right and centre. So I do think Breuer has maybe a bit more in his game that could be built upon and improved upon. So I'm hoping to see him play alongside Pulisic and Amari Hutchinson. I'm hoping that he gets minutes and Porter is brave enough because with Ziyech, one of the favourites to leave in January, I'm just not expecting him really to be used that much unless he really, really has to because we need to generate some money. If we're going to sign players in January, we have to sell players. And the last thing we would ever need is for ZX to get some stupid injury. And then we can't sell him in the January window. So, so that's my thinking. Uh, hopefully with more like natural wingers that can take on players, that can relieve pressure. And with like the direct threat of Breuer, Hutchinson and Pulisic in that front three against a BT Man City. I mean, let's see what happens, right? So right now, I'm going to end things by giving you guys my match prediction and... I'm going to be a bit honest, I'm not probably expecting us to get a result. For me, it's more about the performance. If we can perform well, do well, that is the most important thing. I've gone for a 2-0 win to Man City. I never feel good when I'm bet betting against my team. I don't even feel right by saying it, but if we give a good account of ourselves, that is the most important thing that we can actually take from the game and continue that in further games. So you guys, that is my match preview. Share your thoughts and opinions. How do you feel about the game as well too? And on that note, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys there with some more videos. Cool.